Well, it looks like I fell asleep, um, you know, during Pac-12 After Dark last night, which is rather unfortunate. Um, so, here we are with our Week 9 recap of the college football season, and I'll say some things at the end about the first set of rankings and, you know, who I think should be ranked where and stuff like that. Um, by the way, y'all, I have a community tab on YouTube now, so, um... Yeah, I'll be asking questions, putting up polls and stuff like that throughout the throughout the rest of the year and beyond. Um, so, you know, please interact with those. I believe I put up a couple of polls already, like one's asking which league will survive, the USFL or the XFL. And then the other question I have up right now is which indoor arena league will have the best 2023 season. And I put like the IFL, the NAL, the CIF, and then another league, which is the other section, like, you know, like I say, like an AWFC or a AIFA or an EIF or something like that. You know, it is what it is there. The community tab is up. Thank goodness. I'm glad. And let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing to 200, please. You know, we still have a goal to make. So, hoping we get like six, seven subscribers next month and in December so you know get like six or seven subscribers per the next couple months we get over 200 to end the year which is what I wanted that's what I wanted from the show in the first place is to get over 200 this year so um, Thursday night really um, I really didn't even check these games on Thursday I'm like okay these games happened uh, but Virginia Tech NC State, you know, Virginia Tech had a like a 21 to 3 lead, but then MJ Morris stepped in for NC State. He stepped in through three touchdowns. The Wolfpack were able to come back and win this game. Good stuff for NC State. That'll keep that'll keep them in the realm of probably being ranked in the first CFP. Um, Utah Washington State is the uh, was the other Thursday night game. Bryson Barnes got the start instead. Um, I believe Cam Rising was hurt, and although you know, not much happened because of these two defenses for both teams. Utah was able to grind it out and get the win. So good there, good stuff there for Utah that keeps them in the Pac-12 race. And then we go to Saturday noon Saturday. First up, Notre Dame and Syracuse, and I told y'all, this Notre Dame team is not average. They're not average in any sense of the word. Like, that defense is talented, and what did, and what did I tell you? They showed you how talented they were. They picked off Garrett Schrader on the first play of the game and took the ball back for a pick six. And then the running game came in and took over again. We talked about some of these guys on Notre Dame's run, you know, run specialists before, like Audrey Estime and Logan Diggs. They they combined for over 200 yards on Syracuse. And although you know Syracuse was able to put up a little bit of fight, they could never get fully going. Garrett Schrader got hurt, you know, and he left the game. Sean Tucker, uh, he got he got more touches this time at least. But he still got held under 100 yards total, which is, you know, not good. And Syracuse, I told you, Syracuse could not have a letdown. And that's exactly what happened. They had a complete letdown in which they got thoroughly dominated by Notre Dame. And now look at you. Now look at Syracuse. Not only are you out of pretty much any discussions of the ACC, you know, lest, you know, Clemson loses a couple games, you're also out of, you know, Probably a, uh, for now at least, you're probably out of the New Year's Six discussion. You know, two losses, you know, one loss is bad enough, but two straight losses, that also puts you out of the CFP race. Yes, I said it. Syracuse was in the college football playoff race until November. You know, crazy stuff. So, the ghouls of Halloween got Syracuse. The, the big one, Ohio State, Ed State. And this game was wild. There was a whole sequence in which, you know, there was a touchdown in this game and they got called back and then hence they had to do it all over again. But for most of this game, 
Penn State was able to take it to Ohio State. They were able to take it to them, you know. Parker Washington was getting the ball from Sean Clifford. He, you know, Washington had 11 catches, 179 yards, and a touchdown. And Clifford was throwing the ball to him and throwing the ball all over the field. But there's also the sprinkles of doubt coming in. And Sean Clifford, unfortunately, he had an up and down day. Yeah, he and Parker Washington hooked up so many times. But there's also the fact that Penn State turned the ball over four times. And the big playmaker was JT Tuiumomalau. You know, and I and I probably said this man's name wrong, but this man was out here beasting, feasting on Sean Clifford. Three sacks, two picks, forced fumble, fumble recovery. And as soon as Penn State was up 21 to 16, as soon as Penn State was up 21 to 16, Tuiumomalau took over in full force and as soon as as soon as CJ Stroud and company went down the field took Ohio State down the field you know and scored a touchdown next thing you know Ohio State scored four straight touchdowns put Penn State to bed put their not only pretty much not only their big 10 chances to bed but their CFP chances to bed Honestly, probably in the New Year's Six as well. Because, again, Penn State just did not did not look great that final eight or so minutes of this game. And they just got completely steamrolled in the final eight minutes. And that's not what you want to see. If you want to be a contender, that is not what you want to see. So that pretty much puts Penn State out of discussion for the Big Ten at this moment. Because I, I, I just don't see Ohio State losing two games in the Big Ten. There's no way with a month left. You know, and Michigan coming, I just don't see it. Um, I don't I, I think this Ohio State team is probably the best team in the country. Like, this is the number one team in the country. That's what I feel. But I'll, I'll talk about that more later. TCU West Virginia to close out the noon games. Um, the Mountaineers, they kept pace early. But then, you know, Max Duggan and company were able to pull one out of the bag and get the win you know again a crazy play in which you know West Virginia just completely messed up like on multiple occasions like again taking the points when you need to take the points punt when you need to punt don't go off sides and let Max Duggan throw a touchdown to clinch the game on you don't do things like that and you know Neil Brown he's gonna have a lot He's going to have a lot of time to reflect. I hope he gets fired. You know, I think a lot of West Virginia fans think so, too. Because, I mean, this man has done absolutely nothing to warrant any sort of praise. And then the afternoon games, Oklahoma State, Kansas State was my game of the week. And it turned out to be a farce as the Wildcats defense with a master class of performance. They shut up the Cowboys not only from, you know, the college football playoff, but, you know, they put them in a deep hole in the Big 12 race now. And Kansas State, which is one loss to the Big 12, they're, they're in a good seat to catch up the TCU. I mean, Will Howard had four touchdowns. Like, you think Adrian Martinez would, would, would be, you know, would be the bad thing, but no, no, not that's not only the case, like, you know, Deuce Bond was out here running all over K State, and I mean, the Cats had like 500 yards of total offense. Spencer Sanders, you know, and company they turned it over three times, had barely 200 yards of total offense, and I mean the Pokes they struggled, they struggled mightily. You know, again, they probably should have lost to Texas, but then again, Texas is Texas. You know, and I know people were gonna start bringing that up. Oh well. Oh well, Oklahoma State should lost Texas. You know it is what it is. I know, I know people are still bringing up the Alabama game, but we'll talk about Kansas State a little more, and we'll talk about Texas a little more um, on Tuesday night, not not Wednesday, Tuesday night. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna either do it Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm probably just gonna you know scale it back and go with Wednesday. Uh, but yeah, K State, they're in the driver's seat. In the Big 12. They're in the driver's seat along with TCU now. Big one in the American was Cincinnati UCF. Mikey Keene had to come in 
to lead the Knights as John Riz Plumley he got hurt and left the game. And unfortunately for Cincinnati, you know, they were down 10 to 6 at half, you know, and I mean, Cincinnati was able to grind some things out. They were able to get some points on the board in the second half, but UCF ran all over them, like 200 plus yards rushing from, you know, a combined attack. And UCF was able to smother Ben Bryant and company when they needed to. Got the safety, you know, got the touchdowns when they needed to. And again, it, it was those last couple drives that UCF had in which they really, really put the run game on them. You know, and that's really why they got over 200 yards rushing in the first place. Again, we talked about this. UCF's run game is on a different level. They can run the football. And Cincinnati could not stop it when they needed to. And thus, that conference winning streak over, the potential to go to the New Year's Six, probably over, but not yet, you know. And the reason why I say not yet is because the rest of the American still has to be decided. Cincinnati's not out of it in the American. UCF's a little bit, you know, in the driver's seat themselves. So, both teams, they still have a chance. They still have a big chance in the American. No problem for Oregon. They took care of Cal. Bo, Bo Nix had six TDs this time. And the biggest shocker, you know, was Wake Forest Louisville. Again, I did say something about Louisville being able to keep up with Wake Forest. But I didn't think it would be like this. The Deeks turned it over eight times. Six in the third quarter. Eight times total. Two of those were pick sixes from Sam Hartman. And they and the Deeks just looked off. They, like they looked terrible that third quarter. And that propelled Louisville over the top to take care of business and get the win. Like, wow. Not only did Wake Forest mess things up for themselves in the ACC Atlantic, they messed things up, you know, you know, for you know, a top ten type of Appearance, and I mean, they're not going to be in the top ten. They might, they might fall into the low twenties, like a lot of the ACT, ACC teams will. Which I mean, I think that's where a lot of the ACC teams are going to be in the low twenties when the CFP comes out. You know, at least except for like North Carolina. But we'll talk about North Carolina in a minute. Um, but yeah, this is a big win for Louisville right here, man. Big big time win. Let me tell you, I I, I did not expect this type of blowout at all. Florida, Georgia, yeah, Florida had a crazy third quarter in which they scored 17 points. But, I mean, Brock Bowers, that run game, that defense, I mean, just too much. Too much Georgia in this game, and Georgia Cruz. Like, personally, don't think they should be number one. I think they should be number three. Yes, I said that. We'll talk about who I think should be number two. But I think you all know who should be number two in a moment. Um, and then Illinois, Nebraska, oh my goodness, this Illinois defense is on a different level. Like, this is the first time I watched Illinois play this year. Um, I did not watch their game in which they lost to Indiana, which I think a lot of people are still kind of questioning, how did they lose to Indiana? But this defense, Chase Brown running all over the, the Cornhuskers, Tommy DeVito actually playing, you know, really, really good. They ju they just they were just too much for Nebraska. Like Nebraska was up nine to six at the end of the first quarter, and after that, the Illini scored twenty straight points. Didn't allow Nebraska to get any points. They made them turn the ball over four times. Casey Thompson got hurt, you know, as well. And I mean, the Illinois in the driver's seat, in the Big Ten West, which is crazy to think about. Crazy to think about. Seven wins, one loss. Illinois might have a 10 win season on their hands. They might be going to the Big Ten Championship if things continue to go their way. I really think they I really think they can pull this off. You know, they have a they have a tough test though in November. They have a couple tough tests in November. So we'll see if they can get past them. But I think this is a this is a perfect team to be ranked in the top fifteen. My probably top 12, honestly. Um, the way they've been playing, good stuff. Good stuff. And in Missouri, South Carolina, I, 
I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm very shocked here. Brady Cook and company were able to beat the Cox. They, they like Spencer Rattler and company barely had 200 yards of total offense. Lost the ball twice. You know, two turnovers in this game, and then you know, Missouri decided to use ball control, Brady Cook's dual threat abilities to beat South Carolina. And South Carolina, they're going to be unranked. They're definitely going to be unranked. Don't think there should not be a three-loss team in the college football playoff rankings. I'm just going to let y'all know right now. So South Carolina would be one. I know some people, you know, hint, hint R.J. Young, are putting Texas back in the polls when they should not be anywhere near those. Please don't. Please do not rank Texas anywhere. This is That's a four-loss team at minimum, you know. So, and Texas already, you know, Three quarters of the way there to the four losses, so you know it is what it is. Um, and then in the evening, you know, you know after after the craziness of that afternoon in the, in the morning slate, not much happened in the evening. Um, Kentucky Tennessee was a big game, but then Hendon Hooker said, "I, right, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put up another masterclass for performance," and he had four touchdowns in this game. Two of them go into Jalen Hyatt. And then, you know, Will Levis and company did nothing. Three turnovers, Cats offense, anemic, dead to rights. And a quickly promising season for Kentucky just turned into, all right, it's time for basketball. So, Kentucky fans, go sit this one out. It's time for basketball season anyway. You know, November's around the corner. It's time. It's time to go watch the basketball, Kentucky fans. It's time. It's time. We don't. I don't need to see this team anywhere near top twenty-five for quite some time. Like this was a embarrassing performance from Kentucky again. I thought this game would be a little bit, you know, closer, and a lot of people said the same thing. This would be a little bit closer, but it's not. It wasn't. Forty-four to six, absolute beating from Tennessee. So it's going to set up a big one. We'll talk about that big one next week. Let me tell you. USC Arizona, unfortunately, you know, for, for USC, that defense is still terrible. It's still bad. But, hey, again, I said Arizona needed one thing. They needed one stop to work out for them, and they couldn't get that one stop. Caleb Williams was just too much. He had another five-touchdown performance, you know. Couldn't – they – Cats couldn't get the stop they needed. I, I said it. They couldn't get the stop. And I'm going to say it next week, too. I'm going to say it next week for Cal, too. Cal needs the one stop. I'm going to say, I'm gonna keep saying it until somebody proves me otherwise. Do I think USC is a top 10 team? No. Do I think USC belong, is going to be in the top 10 when the CFP comes out? Yes. I just, don't, I just don't see it that they're a top 10 team. Because, again, like this... USC, all they all they need to do is just keep winning. You know, that's all they need to do to stay in the top ten. But they do not look like one. They do not look like a team that should be contending for a playoff spot right now. They got to fix that defense. Michigan, Michigan State was a game that happened. I mean, there was somebody getting assaulted in the tunnel by Spartan players after the game. But Michigan State, you know didn't try to, you know, play as hard as they hit, you know, defenseless dudes, you know, on the field because, I mean, Michigan State did absolutely nothing to Michigan's defense. Like, Michigan's defense, they they, they, did, they did it again. They held Spartan to just seven points. Michigan kicked five field goals in this game. Blake Corm had another 177 yards on the day. And, I mean, again, Michigan was just too much. Even the old, he had trouble with the snap call from McDonough, you know, was pretty funny. But, unfortunately for Michigan State, this team is comedy in the worst ways because they lost to Michigan pretty embarrassingly. Too bad, so sad for Michigan State. Too bad, so sad. Ole Miss Texas a and was pretty interesting for a while, like or at least pretty much the entire game, because Connor Wegman 
came in, lit up the Rebels' defense. He had four touchdowns, by the way. But then, you know, Ole Miss again. And I told, and I said it, and I said this. They got, the Aggies have to stop the run, and they did not do that. Quinshawn Juggins read for 205 yards on this team, man. You got to stop the run if you want to win. Jackson Dart added three more touchdowns through the air, and that was it. You know, Ole Miss did just enough to stay with just a single loss on the season. Really good defense in the later stages by Ole Miss. Like, that is how you do it right there. I mean, A&M, disappointing season. They're 3-5 and five now. You need, them to go, you need to go bowling, at least. Jimbo. Jimbo, you there, buddy? Hey, you need to win. You need to win three games. Are you gonna be able to win three games? We'll see if we'll see if A and M can even go to a bowl game. But I, 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 there is some serious doubt now that I think they won't. Pitt, North Carolina, Drake May, five touchdowns yet again. I told y'all. I told y'all. Definitely a guy that we haven't been talking about a lot. I mean, I mean, this man that continues to impress week after week. Like North Carolina was down for a little bit of this game. Like they were trailing it for a good chunk of this game, but then again, the five touchdowns from May and that fourth quarter by North Carolina too much, too much talent. You know, on the Tar Heels offense and that defense was able to. Put down Keaton Slovis and company. So Pitt, they're four and four. North Carolina, again, they have one loss to Notre Dame, and that's it. Which again, also very perplexing. But it is what it is. North Carolina should be out of the top. You know, uh, should be out of like the twenty to twenty-five range. You know, they they should be more like a top twenty, top fifteen type team at this point. So, you know, it is what it is. And then Stanford-UCLA, the game I fell asleep on. But, I mean, it, that game was over by the time I, I finished most of my notes for the recap. And it's, it, again, too much DTR. He was hurt, by the way, too. And too much Zach Charbonnet. Too much. And Stanford couldn't even, couldn't even muster up a good fight. In UCLA, they stay with just one loss. So the Pac-12... You know, as we wrap this up, the Pac-12 is alive in November with three teams with either one loss or no losses. Pac-12 is alive. The Big 12, going to be a big November for the Big 12. In fact, the first week of November will be big for the Big 12, I think. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something to see. Because, again, that first week of November, because, you know, TCU's really the only hope the Big 12 has. And I know people are underrating TCU, you know, because of the way they've been playing at times. Again, and that's just the way the Big 12 is. Again, the, probably the most entertaining conference to watch this year. Uh, like the Mountain West last year. Yes, the Mountain West didn't get any teams in the, in the CFP. But they were the most entertaining conference from start to finish last year. And I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying that. I'm, I'm di- I watched way more Mountain West games than I, di- I did last year than I think any other conference last year. You know. And, you know, the Big 12 is going to be in that same boat. Watching a lot of TCU, you know. You know, Kansas State, you know, despite the fact that they have two losses, really good Kansas State team. Despite the fact that Oklahoma State has two losses, that's still a good team. Texas has three losses. That's still a pretty talented team. You know, Kansas, again, Kansas, you know, is is going to probably go bowling unless they completely collapse, which, I mean, they started, but they haven't completely collapsed. And, I mean, the Big 12 race, race is wide open. It's not just TCU and Kansas State at the top. Again, the rest of the Big 12, they're still there. You know, the two lost teams in the Big 12 are still there, Oklahoma State and Texas and you know, and, you know the three lost teams are technically alive. You know, so you know your Oklahomas, your Kansases, they're alive. Your Baylor's, they're alive. 
in the Big 12 race. Like this, this race for this conference is not over. The SEC, honestly, the first week of November will pretty much decide it. Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, LSU, those games will decide who will go to the SEC championship unless something stupid happens, which I doubt it. But, I mean, then again, I don't know. So, those games right there, that first week of November, will pretty much decide it. In the ACC, it's Clemson, it's North Carolina, and it's everybody else. North Carolina, the Coastal is theirs to lose at this point. The Coastal is theirs to lose. I hope they don't do it, because I think North Carolina has, they have the talent, and we... You know, I've, I think we've said this a lot of years, but I really think I really think North Carolina, you know, definitely a team that nobody's going to be talking about for quite some time. They haven't they haven't been talking about them, you know, you know, including myself. Nobody's been talking about North Carolina at all for the first you know two months of the season. But you know, now it's time. It's time to talk about them. Clemson. On the other hand, Clemson is somehow, there's somehow a team that's going to be in the top 10, probably top 5, and their biggest test remaining is again, Notre Dame. You know, South Carolina might put up a fight, but Notre Dame is the biggest obstacle remaining, which I don't, I, and again, I don't know, I don't know about you know, can Notre Dame beat Clemson? I don't. I don't know about all that. You know, because again, the people like to doubt. You know, you know teams that are just you know again that have lost their way. You know, but have really really good you know wins. I mean, Notre Dame has good wins. They also have really bad losses, and that's why they have three losses. You know. Like the ACC is not as completely middling, you know, as it has been. Definitely the weakest of the Power Five conferences this year, but not so terrible that it's like, oh, well, I don't know. The Big Ten, obviously, it's going to come down to Illinois, Purdue in the West for the most part, and then Ohio State, Michigan in the East. It's looking like it's going to go down that path. Of Ohio State, Michigan, unless things happen in November. If things do happen in November, which I mean, I I honestly kind of doubt it. We're gonna see Ohio State, Michigan, be the game, as it should be, deciding a whole lot of things, a whole lot of things for the Big Ten. And then the group of five, I have no idea. Tulane is the front runner right now. Nobody's talking about Coastal Carolina, uh, but the rest of the American, you know, right now, definitely in a position to where they can be like, yeah, we want that spot. So Cincinnati, UCF, Houston, those four teams in the American, you know, you could say like in the Sun Belt too, like Coastal Carolina, Troy, you know, South Alabama, that cluster, definitely in a position as well so keep let's keep our eyes out on the Sun Belt and let's keep our eyes out in the American as we continue to go through the rest of November you know we start November with Maction we start November with the college football playoff rankings so personally I think it will be it will be Ohio State at number one most impressive team by far most impressive defense most impressive offense by far Yes, I feel a little biased by saying this, but I mean, I've been saying Ohio State has been the number one team for weeks now. Georgia, it's still Ohio State, Georgia, and everybody else right now. I still, I, I'm, you know, Tennessee is going to be my number three, but, you know, Ohio State, Georgia, Tennessee, and then number four. Number four is just going to have to be Michigan. Like, it's, you know, it's the best of, you know, the remaining undefeated teams. Michigan does not impress me at all, by the way. Not at this Clemson, not at this TCU. TCU would be five and Clemson would be six, so, you know, just so you know. And then Oregon would be seven, Alabama would be eight. Number nine 
would be uh, probably um, no, I'd probably be number nine would be USC, and then number ten would be UCLA. So the Pac-12 would take up that you know that eight through ten spot. You know that that's just me with my top ten. You know I usually don't do top tens like that, but that's how I'm thinking the top ten should work out. So again, Ohio State, Georgia. Tennessee, Michigan, TCU, Clemson, Alabama, Oregon, USC, UCLA. And honestly, like USC will probably be like number seven or something like that. But I mean, they're just about the least impressive undefeated team so far. And that's why I have them ranked pretty low in my personal opinion. But that's just me. Yeah, this one's kind of this one's kind of a long one, but I mean, come on, we we have a lot of questions for November to be answered, and will they be answered? We'll find out. Because again, we only expected three, at least three, teams in the top twenty-five to lose on Saturday, and we got way more than that. We got, you know, you know, we got we got seven of them. We got seven of those instead, you know. Thought we were gonna get more than seven. I thought it was gonna be like ten or something. But seven top twenty-five teams lost on the last Saturday of October. So the rankings are definitely gonna be shaking up. I again, I don't even know what. I don't even know what the top twenty-five will look like because there's teams that are knocking on the door. Liberty's knocking on the door. Oregon State's knocking on the door. Maryland is knocking on the door. You know teams like those UCF knocking on the door as well so a lot of two loss teams are knocking on the door because there's just not enough one loss teams um, this year you know, so we'll see what happens with the CFP I hate that this is so long but it had to be so until Tuesday night when we see the rankings I'm Big Boy Sports signing out and I'll see you all on Monday night to talk the NFL. Take care.